What's up guys, I'm Maury from Homebrew for Life. What is going on guys, Siege from Homebrew for Life. Today we're making a video we should have made a long time ago. 10 things to becoming a better homebrew. This is gonna be the easiest homebrew for life video we've ever made. And these are things I wish I would have known when I was starting out homebrewing because it would have made me brew faster, stronger, better, quicker, more quality beers. This might be the most important homebrew for life video we've ever made. I'm excited to tell you about these 10 things we came up with today. Calibrate your thermometers. If your thermometers are off, your beer is gonna be off. When I first started brewing, they give you that stainless steel thermometer from the homebrew kit, and I used that for about a year, and when I finally calibrated it, it was like 15 degrees off or something. That means I was mashing at 135. That's why I got way lower alcohol by volumes for like the first year, and everything kind of tasted the same. It tasted super malty, because there was too much sugar left in the beer. Get to, uh, where's our thermal well thing? One thing I recommend, is getting a thermo well. This thing, it's got two holes in it. One where you put in your fermenter, so it's actually touching your wart. And then upgrade to a temperature control, get an Inkbird or an Anvil really fast. They're like 20 or $30. And you're always gonna know what the temperature of your actual wart is, and, and that's huge. Get to kegging fast. Bottling sucks. It's tedious. You're paying for basically trash. Other people's used bottles. You can dig it up. Or you're gonna spend so much time washing and cleaning bottles. It's just a huge pain in the ass. And kegging beer is quick and easy and it's easier to drink. It's easier to get your beer into the keg. I would rather clean than bottle. And it's just a lot more fun to drink beer off draft anyways. Bottles suck. Bottling is my least favorite part of home brewing by so far. It's a big reason why people quit home brewing. System over recipe. It is so important to learn your system and to learn your protocol and your techniques on how you're gonna do things. When everybody starts out brewing, they wanna try all these different styles. They wanna do an IPA, they wanna do a Saison, they wanna do a brown ale. Start with the same recipe and hone your system in. Figure out how long it takes to heat up your strike. Are you hitting your pre-boil gravity? And brew the same recipe multiple times four or five times until you feel like you got that recipe perfect. Even on a commercial level, commercial brewing, it can take us two or three tries till we get the recipe perfect. Get a dry erase board. It's important. You can take lots of notes on paper and things like that. But paper gets lost. So it's just really nice to have a dry erase board where you can keep track of your budget, where you can keep track of your schedule. You got your ingredients up there. A lot of times I'll even get a dry erase calendar. You've got your budget up there. You've got your deadline up there. It's stuff that is not going to get... Put your bills up there. Put your debt up there. Put your important stuff on a dry erase board. That helps me out tremendously. It's notes that are constantly going to be in your face. Number five, buy used. Everyone wants to buy the flashy stuff. If you want to spend your whole fortune and savings on brand new equipment that looks super nice, go ahead and do that. It is nice, but it is not necessary. I totally recommend going on Craigslist and offer up and you can find great equipment. Stainless steel never goes bad. It's going to last forever. And if someone started homebrewing and they're kind of over it, you're going to be able to pick up that equipment for pennies on the dollar. People get into homebrewing super fast and they get out just as fast and they flip their stuff. Stainless steel will be good forever. It's the same stuff that we wash in our kitchens. It's plastic and it's stainless steel. Back in the day, they were using pots and pans as homebrew stuff. We all want the flashy, nice stuff. That's not necessarily gonna mean you're gonna make better beer. Learn how to cool your wort fast. Have a pre-chiller. A lot of times those guys are using these immersion chillers and it can take 45 minutes to an hour to cool their wort down. But if you get a pre-chiller, which means you're gonna have two chillers, one in your kettle, one in your pre-chiller, filled up with ice, invest in a big cooler that can hold a bunch of water and ice and it could cut your chilling down process in half. We have a video on that. I can cool my wort down in about 15 minutes. Even for 10 gallon batches. Get to 10 gallons fast. Hell, get to 15 gallons, get to 20. If you're brewing five gallons of beer, it takes, you know, six to eight hours of your day. And if you have five of your buddies over and five gallons is only 40 pints and that'll be gone in two hours. It's gonna be a couple more bucks, but it's gonna ultimately take the same amount of time. You get more beer when you scale up and you don't have to brew as much. If you're, if you're brewing once or twice a month, do 10 gallon batches. 
Number eight, brew by yourself. Brew by yourself. I know when you first start brewing, you're gonna have the gang over and everyone's gonna have a good time and everyone's gonna be excited to make beer. We've all been there. It's gonna turn into a party pretty fast, but it could also turn into a shit show. It's fun to have a party, have a barbecue, have everyone over when you're brewing, but if you're trying to become a better brewer, and you're trying to make your beers taste better, then brew by yourself and you won't have all the distractions of people getting fucked up and people spilling things and who knows, what person threw what in your beer when you weren't looking. So it's important to brew by yourself or maybe with one other person that is, you know, a qualified home brewer and you guys can help each other out and take good notes and make good beer. We're doing such small batches, we could brew by ourselves. We could lift stuff up by ourselves. You can't do that if you're brewing, you know, 50 gallons or 100 gallons, but if you're doing five or 10 gallons, you could, you've got enough muscle power to move stuff around with just one guy. <laughs> Keep your stuff clean. Clean as you brew. When you're brewing, there's a lot of downtime. Maury's got an old joke. What's the joke? You're a janitor that brews beer sometimes. After a long brew day, I know you're tired and you just want to go crash out and you're probably drunk, but you wake up the next day and your mash done still has stinky grain in it. Your boil kettle's all covered in sticky beer and war and it's just really hard to clean. Here's another thing kind of where it benefits you brewing from yourself. As soon as you're mashing in, start cleaning. As soon as you get to boil, you got 60 minutes, clean your mash tun. Treat it like a restaurant. You wanna have everything clean at night. You don't wanna clean in the morning. That's really gonna help you out not getting into a beer slump. There's nothing worse than waking up in the morning, your kitchen's trashed, your garage is trashed, and you look at your airlock and there's no movement even going on. And now you're really gonna be like, I'm done with brewing or I'm over brewing for a while. Rinse things out. It's a lot easier to clean and rinse things when they're freshly dirtied. And the next time you go to brew, it'll be ready for you to go. Right is the ring of words. 10, this is a big one. Have a fermenter that has a spigot connected to it. Back in the day, these old wives tales of, oh, this beer takes exactly two weeks to ferment. That's never true. Nobody wants to wait a month to drink five gallon batches of beer. There's so many variables on oxygen, how much yeast you pitch, things like that. So it's important to be able to pull samples and take gravity readings. You could be fermenting your beer in three or four days and you didn't have to wait that whole two weeks. If you have a spigot, pull a reading, put it in your hydrometer. If you hit your final gravity, start kegging. The faster you get your homebrew, the more you're gonna wanna homebrew. That's it, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully this video helped you guys a lot more out than when we first started out brewing. And um, again, if I were to stress on any of this stuff, can you hear the crickets in there? Yeah. You can hear the crickets? Get your thermometers calibrated or just get to an ink bird or an anvil faster. Is it that loud? He's having an orgy. That cricket is getting his fuck on. Everything starts with your thermometer. If you can't hit your strike temperatures, you're not gonna get your good mash temperatures. You're not gonna be able to ferment properly. If you guys have any questions or if you guys have any comments or more advice. The whole reason of this video is to help you guys get out of that beer slump on how to get going for people starting out. We'd love to hear about your comments on how you find better ways to make better beer. And ultimately to keep brew days going more on pace, less stressful, post them in the comment section below. And as always, cheers to eating good and drinking good. Here's to eating good and drinking good. Couple things, we have a ton of beginner brewing videos on our channel, step-by-step -step extract videos and step-by-step -step all grain videos. We'll also throw some links in the description of the video of the stuff we just talked about, making a keg rater, how to keg your beer, how to add gelatin to your beer so it looks like Coors Light, how to make your own fermenters with spigots for $7. Also, we moved the broadcast over to its new channel as well as created a Spotify account for it so you can listen to it without having to look at our shitty faces. That's it. Everybody have a good night. Actually, just kidding. I'll do one right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hate talking about money. I hate talking about money. All right, check it. To the blood of our enemies. <laughs> 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 <laughs>